Hey there, everyone, and welcome to another Factorio Friday Facts, uh, number 392, uh, Parameterized Blueprints. I'm Exterminator, and thank you for joining me today. And uh, please excuse the uh, very stuffy uh, voice, and I might be sniffling a little bit here. I'm still trying to recover from being sick. Uh, but uh, we get into this, and this is uh, kind of technical, but mostly just a really, really awesome feature to do with Blueprints coming in 2.0. Uh, so this is all written by Kovrex. Kovrex made this whole feature. He says he just finished it up. Uh, basically, the uh, thing is that he always thought that this feature we're going to talk about was too hardcore to be included, uh, but learned that it is usually a mistake to underestimate players, so he decided to add it anyway, and I'm glad he did, because it's, it's pretty awesome. Now, there's some parts of it I don't entirely understand, and I think it's just because it's worded kind of weird. Uh, but I'm sure some of you will totally understand it and probably explain it will be fine. Um, but motivation. So uh, he goes into basically saying that uh, the most common uh, motivational examples is with train stations. So when you go to set up a train station, uh, you know, Corex, for example, has, uh, you know, filtered inserters and stuff like that, maybe some, some like, uh, train stop conditions and such. And uh, even with blueprints, you know, you have to go in... It, in like if you have one blueprint with stone or whatever, uh, when you go to place it again, it's gonna be stone again, but if you need it to be another resource, you have to change the resource, uh, and you can kind of see the process here. Now you can use constant combinators to change like all of them at once, but you still have to go in and change the constant combinator every time. Um, and you, again, you can kind of see the process here. He just, you know, just shows a video. Uh, it is a little tedious, you know, when, when you think about it, having to do this a bunch of different times. So uh, there's, excuse me, two ways to solve it in 1.1. There are uh, the users are network, network, which I said, and also uh, having one specific blueprint for each item, which sounds like a nightmare, right? And then, uh, so, so those are like the two options we have now, is you can either use like a constant combinator, like I said, or just have like a blueprint book with a bajillion different blueprints in it. Uh, and then there are parameterized blueprints which is this new feature. So this leads to the definition of what we want. We want to have a blueprint which doesn't have a specific item condition, but rather is generic and allows you to configure it differently each time you build it. The question is how to implement it without adding unnecessary GUI clutter in the way unless we can, <coughs> unless we care about this specific feature. Reconfiguring existing blueprints. So the first piece of the puzzle is a tool to can reconfigure existing blueprints. For simplicity, let's take the example of a constant combinator configured like this. So you have iron, copper, E set to five, and then X set to seven, right? And then uh, when we make a blueprint of it, we can access the new main tool used for reconfiguration. And this is the whole uh, like advanced parameters section. So if you make a blueprint of it, you then get access to this menu and you can put names and then there's these different values uh, that it's uh, reading. So you can see value iron, ingredient of something which is blank, uh, value five, parameter variables, uh, value uh, copper, value X, and then value seven. So <clears throat> this is, again, a little bit confusing to look at. Uh, it, it, it gets a little more clear as we go down here. Uh, so the first and most um, uh, simple usage of this UI is to change all occurrences of some item or number in the blueprint to something else. If you want to change all the plates where X signals used in the blueprint to be Y, uh, that's all the places, not plates, uh, just change the value in the UI uh, and confirm the blueprint uh, was just reconfigured. The same with changing all five, all fives in a blueprint. So practically every setting number you can have in an entity can be reconfigured by this feature, inserters, uh, inserter filters, a similar recipe, so you're going to work settings, combinator, configuration, logistic requests, inventory filters, even rich text icons, which is pretty cool. Uh, the rich text icons can be used to change the name of the train stop as long as you can make a rich text part of it. <coughs> this is already an improvement as you can always reconfigure uh, the blueprint to a different item before building it, but it still isn't good enough. Uh, so parameters, the first step was to define special IDs called parameters for items, recipes, fluids, and entities. So we have uh, zero through nine here. So I had to, uh, I had to cough. There's, there's just no avoiding it right now, unfortunately, if I want to make this video today. Uh, so zero through nine, uh, quality is obviously just a quality feature, nothing to do with this. 
Uh, these have no meaning outside of the parameterization context. They are used just for the blueprint generic configuration. They are normally not selectable anywhere in the game outside the blueprint uh, thing, but for power users, uh, there is a interface setting to make them actually available everywhere. So I can see this becoming very powerful. So back to that original blueprint, we can configure it like this. So you, it, this is just the name, um, the wanted item number one, wanted item number two, the wanted count, and the control signal. So you can see he's just using a different uh, parameter here. So value zero, value one, uh, and then he leaves the five and seven the same, and then the value two is the control signal. So you can see that <clears throat> he specified all three IDs, and number five is used in both of the items to be parameterized as well, filling so up the name is not necessary but it's useful just so you know what you're doing. Um, and then whenever you want to try to build a blueprint configure this way, you get this small dialog where you're asked to fill parameters for this specific instance of the blueprint. So this is where it makes a little more sense is once you actually get this. Uh, so basically you could say like, th this is super easy to change then, right? Is you can just say that, <clears throat> like you could change this to steel in, I don't know, low density structures or something, right? Instead of the iron and copper that it was, you could change the five to be whatever number you need it to be, and then you could uh, change the control signal uh, to w which was an X to whatever you need it to be, right? So in this example, uh, you know, this is just an example, so it doesn't have much meaning, but you can imagine that like if you had these as inserters, for example, uh, with, with those same signals that you could just change like, okay, all of all of the inserters that were iron, or, or like all of the inserters uh, with zero, I want to change to, you know, like I said, steel, and then the, all the ones with ones you want to change to low density, and instead I want this count to be uh, 20 or something. Uh, <clears throat> so he says, I care about details, so you can even see how the build preview changes as the parameters are being specified. So this will help it be a little more clear. So you can see the assembler, has zero, one, and then uh, the uh, combinator has two and four there. So you can see that recipe one, super straightforward, you can just change the recipe and any assembler with one in it uh, is going to uh, have that changed. And then you can see a circuit item setter and then constant load. These are again, just the titles that's being given. And then when you place this again, you can change it to something else if you want. Uh, or if you just want this, and you would obviously just use a normal blueprint without the uh, variables or parameters, right? And once you press confirm, the blueprint is built with the desired configuration. You can see another example here with rail stations, and you can see uh, that now uh, station zero and station one, you can basically do both at the same time and have different configurations on them, right? So this one was gears, this one's copper, this one's gonna be uh, ammo, and then also uh, piercing ammo here. And it's it's way faster, right? It's super nice than having to set every single one individually. So that's really really nice. Uh, dependent parameter. So this is where I get like a little confused. Uh, but he says this is already useful, but still not good enough. Why? Because parameters sometimes are expected to be related to each other, and forcing the user of the blueprint to always fill them up correctly is not good form. So basically, an example he gives is that uh, an item with three ingredients, parameters one, two, three. Uh, you have a blueprint with that, sorry, you have a blueprint with uh, to craft an item with three ingredients and take the ingredients from the train network. Naturally, I can make a big setup with three different input stations, each parameterized to be one of the inputs in a row of assembly machines, uh, parameterized to create the desired item, parameter zero. But whenever I want uh, to build this blueprint, I would have to remember and manually fill the three ingredients for the desired item, which obviously gets kind of tedious. So this is why parameters can be configured to be an ingredient of another parameter automatically instead of having to fill it in. So this is where it gets like a little confusing, at least to me. So the item to craft is, <coughs> excuse me, zero. So you would basically, you would just, so then when you go to set your, get your dialog box, uh, then you would change the zero to whatever item you want. And then parameters one, two, and three are ingredients of zero, right? So that basically means that this is, so if you change this to, uh, I'm trying to think of something that takes three ingredients, like red circuits, for example, right? Uh, then my understanding is when you change, when, when you get your dialog box to build a blueprint, if you change the zero uh, or, or the O 
two red circuits, then one, two, and three are just automatically going to change to copper wire, uh, green circuits, and plastic, right? Because those are the three ingredients needed in this. Now, I don't know if you can only do three um, or if there's ability to add more, because obviously some recipes take more than three ingredients, uh, but that's basically my understanding of how it would work. <clears throat> and then you can see here that, yeah, like I said, it's already filled in. So dependent numbers. Uh, again, this is like even this is the next step further to me. Uh, so with the number configuration, the way dependency can be set is much more free as math exists. So for example, we have value 100, it's a parameter, value 101, value 200. And you can see here that the variable is x. So in these, you can just use simple math where the formula uh, for this is x plus 1, so we're taking 100 plus uh, 1, right, 101, and then this is x times 2, so that's why we're getting 200, and then uh, the name here, is, and then we have a uh, yellow belt and red belt, right? So let's just say, though, for some reason, we only want the user to modify the value of 100, but the contraption just needs the second number to be one bigger and the third number to be double the first. Obviously, in a real world example, like in the game, this doesn't really make sense. But as for this example, right, we'll just say this. Um, so in this case, if you fill upon building the blueprint and get that dialog box, um, the 100 to be 10 instead, then because of these formulas, it'll change it to be 11 and then uh, 20, right, instead of 200. So this is super nice. It basically just allows you to change like one value and then a bunch of other values uh, in recipes or whatever change because of that. Uh, rather than having to go in and change a ton of different things uh, individually and manually. And the conclusion here is basically that Factorio has been compared to programming many times, and this is just a, another part of the analogy. Almost everything you can do with parameterized blueprints uh, can be done through certain network logic, so it looks almost redundant, uh, but you know there's some parallels in programming. And he basically just says, uh, it's very similar knowing that uh, the setup will always be filtered to take the iron gear wheels, so it feels like a bit wasted to make a certain network logic around it. That's to simplify the building process. Uh, and he does ask for feedback on this as well. Is it too much? Is it understandable? Uh, can't you wait to use it? And there has been quite a lot of feedback on the forums. Uh, definitely leave your feedback on the forums and the Reddit. And I would love to hear, as always, what you think down in the comments. Uh, if if there's something like if, if there's something I explained wrong here that you totally understand and want to clear up, definitely leave that in the comments. Or if you have questions or your thoughts on this, overall, I think this is super super powerful and a really really good feature. I've been wanting for such a long time to be able to edit blueprints like within the blueprint menu without having to ghost it or whatever and then change it and then re-blueprint it over again. And this is not completely that, but it's pretty close. Like, I think once we really get used to this, we can do a bunch, especially if you can add more than just three. Again, I don't know if you can, uh, but, uh, you know, just being able to change like multiple, like, like this, just being able to change multiple different uh, assemblers to do different things in the blueprint based on just one condition or especially with train stations uh, this is going to be super super powerful and it just lets you be more modular with your blueprints basically uh, but overall I really like this feature I think I'll understand it more once I actually get my hands on it and get to use it generally I do understand it but I, I feel like for me the wording is just a little bit weird um, with like in here how he I mean this makes sense um, I feel like, I mean, really, I think it's just like the way he named these that maybe uh, confused me a little bit. But uh, overall, I think once we get we get used to it, it'll be really, really nice. So that's that one. Thank you so much for watching this week, guys. Thankfully, it was a short one because I'm, uh, I don't know if I can talk anymore after this. Uh, but yeah, if you did enjoy, a like is appreciated. If you're new, welcome. And feel free to subscribe to keep up with all future content. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and do take care.